So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for attending today's Open Source and Finance Meetup webinar, and I'm your host, Grizz Griswold of Finos, and today we're centered around the version 1.2 release of FTC3. Uh, this is part of a series of webinars, meetups, and podcasts that we produce and co-produce with partners in the States, uh, the UK, and APAC regions, and we focus on Finos projects, uh, open source readiness, inner source thought leadership um, around open source and finance and fintech. Um, just want to do some quick housekeeping. Um, the session will be recorded and all normal FinOS community code of conduct applications will apply to this webinar. Um, but also please look out for and subscribe to our open source and finance podcast, bi-weekly newsletter, our weekly This Week at FinOS, and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, we'll put all these links in the chat, by the way. And plus, uh, we also have a FinOS Slack channel uh, not only for everything in FinOS, but specifically for FTC3 too, and we'll put those links in chat. If you have any questions about events, please get in touch with us at events at finos.org. And if you have any thoughts about getting involved with our community, uh, more so than just attending a webinar or a meetup, um, then please contact us at info at finos.org. Um, plus you can reach out directly to us, uh, any of the FinOS employees uh, through Slack. Our agenda today, I'm doing the first part, um, but uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, our topic is around FTC3 and the version 1.2 release. And we have speakers from three different companies, Adaptive Financial Consulting, uh, Cosaic, and Glue42, which are all FinOS members. Um, they also are the lead maintainers on the FTC3 open interoperability standards uh, for the financial desktop. I always have trouble with that word, by the way. Um, and today we have Matt Barrett, who's the CEO and co-founder of Adaptive Financial Consulting, Chris West, who's the Director of Solutions Engineering at Cosaic, Les Leslie Spiro, CEO at Glue42, Oops. and Sean Harvey, FinSymbol Technical Product Owner at Cosaic. Let me scroll down my things. Um, we'll also, uh, we have FTC3 announcements, but we'll put these in chat too. Uh, by the way, James McLeod and Tasha Ellison, also from uh, FinOS, are, are helping me run this. Um, we have the FTC3 website, uh, the version 1.2 release uh, GitHub repo information. We have the FTC3 NPM package for app web applications. And then uh, Rico Eckstein, also adaptive, uh, has written a primer article for FTC3 and FTC3 version 1.2. And like I said, FTC3 is on Slack, so please join us there. And I've talked enough, right? Um, so we're going to open up the virtual floor to Matt Barrett. Uh, again, Matt is the CEO of Adaptive Financial Consulting to discuss the business value of FTC3. Matt, I'm going to take stop sharing and um, you go right ahead. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for, for joining uh, today to talk about um, perhaps weirdly one of my favorite topics, FTC3. Um, we've been, so firstly, let me, let me introduce um, uh, my firm a little bit for those of you that don't, uh, don't know me and us. We are a, a technology provider that focuses on the front office of capital markets. So um, understandably, a lot of our clients are members of, of Finos, uh, and we as a, a consultancy, a technology provider that builds technology and delivers it to our clients, are big believers in open source. Um, we greatly appreciate being able to pick up existing infrastructure um, in the form of open source code and use it to deliver business change for our clients. Um, we don't particularly like writing things that already exist out there, and open source is a fantastic way for us to, to minimize the amount of rework, reinvention of the wheel that we have to do um, for our, uh, let me just turn off my notifications, for our, um, for our clients. Um, and it is great to be um, here as part of Finos. So FTC3 is um, all about interoperability to me, uh, and it's uh, got a lot of business value, a huge amount of business value, in fact. And we see that um, in a number of different areas. Uh, and I know that it sounds, I sometimes sound a little bit um, like I'm, I'm preaching about FTC3 to our clients, um, uh, but I, I really do believe it's going to 
it is the the the, the main way uh, today, the biggest opportunity today to unlock um, new revenue uh, and cost savings um, for uh, e trading, e businesses, in operating in the capital markets uh, at the moment. I I, re I really do believe that. Um, so those are some big claims. Let me dig into those in a, a little bit more detail. Um, so the first of that is is new revenue. How would FTC three go about creating new revenue opportunities. Um, so to me, um, uh, new re generating new revenue in mature markets like the ones that, like, like capital markets, like the ones that our, that our firms, uh, that our clients and firms themselves operate in, is about experimentation. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the cost of experimentation in, in technology within capital markets can be very expensive. Um, we know that there is a huge amount of existing technology already built, um, some of it legacy, some of it relatively new and, and um, am amenable to change, I should say. Um, but a lot of it, but, but regardless, the cost remains high. Um, and so to me, FTC3 uh, enables us to reduce the cost of experimentation uh, to build new capability that can hopefully generate new revenue for our, for our clients. And, and that's why one of the reasons we push it push it. Um, how does it do that? Well, um, fundamentally, software um, and the move towards microservices, uh, the move towards um, component-driven UI, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is, is driven by the fact that um, global releases of digital real estate sitting within investment banks is uh, not economically viable. The scheduling overhead of getting all of those teams to release a new version of their frameworks, libraries, user interfaces, backends, infrastructure is um, is really, really high. And that is uh, economically prohibitive to, to getting anything done. Um, so we think that uh, FTC3 allows you to, to break down components um, because that economic um, drag on, new on Big Bang releases means that Instead, disparate business areas turn into silos and don't talk to each other. And by not talking, they don't talk to each other for good reasons, because talking to each other is very expensive. Uh, but in not talking to each other, they stop delivering together. And if FD, FTC3 enables us, and, and the, other, the, the other speakers today are going to talk about how this, this happens, I'm just going to make the claim that it does allow it, um, that it allows te different teams to deliver together without significant overhead. And by delivering together, that means that uh, you can put functionality that has been implemented across different teams uh, that would previously have been very, very expensive to implement, so expensive that you probably didn't even think about doing it, uh, you can now deliver that into production into your clients and experiment with new capability to try and generate new revenue. Um, those are, and though, as I say, those are big claims, and I'm just going to make statements without without backing them up, um, and, and I'm going to let the rest of the, rest of the speakers demonstrate their products um, to illustrate how that's achieved. Uh, and then there's the cost reduction side. Um, Big app development doesn't work anymore. Um, the need to build fr micro front ends um, to enable piecemeal and modular replacement of, the, of those front ends um, is, is, is true, far truer now than it has been in the past. Uh, and the reason it's true is that the UI, UI technology changes very, very rapidly. Uh, and whilst you may pick the right um, HTML5 framework to build your application today, uh, all we have to do is wait 18 months and you will be wrong, which means that finding developers, refreshing your technology is going to be constant in the web world, which we all now live in when we're trying to build applications in capital markets. That means that you need to write um, pieces of functionality that are smaller and more easily able to stick together, and FTC3 can be that glue. Um, scheduling cross-team releases is expensive. I talked about this as a drag on um, uh, revenue gener generating op opportunities and the cost of experimentation, uh, but it's equally true that removing the need to do that is a great cross-reduction um, ability, and, and that's fantastic and a massive driver for investment and use in, in FTC3. Um, but, but how? So FTC3 lets you decouple releases in time and space. So by working with loosely bound contracts that are defined in the FTC spec and as uh, lightweight JSON objects rather than as embedded as binary contracts, uh, binary APIs within your deployable units, um, you can decouple releases in time and space enabling functionality to become available as applications themselves are released and become available on uh, user desktops. And, and one other big driver for this is, is network effects. So firms have made huge investments in isolated functionality over the last 20 years that uh, is still, still 
there and quite frank, frankly still adding value to their enterprises. Um, but the unlocking that further is um, a, a really nice benefit of FT, FTC3. Um, you can unlock the power of a desktop ecosystem through making use of all of that existing investment you've already made and all of those different parts of uh, capability and functionality that are at the moment locked up within thick client or siloed uh, web applications and start breaking it apart, not necessarily all the way down to uh, be individually releasable or, or, or replaceable component UI elements, but enough that people can start using that different functionality that already exists to stitch together their own workflows and unlock a huge amount of uh, business value from what you've already built and invested in. Um, so I've made some really big claims there. Um, uh, Grizz, uh, but to me, that is really the business value of FTC3. Well, so it kind of sounds pretty utopian. Um, <laughs> so um, how would you suggest that if firms are interested in this, um, how do they get started? It's a very good question. So so one of the things we do uh, with our clients is, is go in and, and, well, help them get started. So perhaps talk to us. But putting that aside, I think one of the huge benefits of FTC3 is that it... Uh, solves the discussion problem. So desktop interop as, as, a, as, a, as a very holistic topic uh, enables a lot of very reasonable people to spend a lot of time um, uh, discussing things that uh, have, have very many reasonable interpretations. And one of the fantastic things about FTC3 is that it provides an answer to all of those questions. It, it, it's, it's that way because FD3, FTC3 says so. Um, so the first thing that they should do is, is really dive into FTC3 to understand that it, and so that they understand how it provides a lot of the answers to the questions they're gonna have when they get started. Uh, and then the next step is to pick a workflow that they've really struggled with. Um, so uh, one we've seen implemented time and time again across different different firms in the sell side, uh, world, particularly here, is around um, managing the rolling of um, swaps. So for example, FX swaps, which have a, an expiry date that coming up in the near future, uh, banks typically would prefer a client to roll that swap um, with, with them rather than with a competitor. But from a client's perspective, it's just cash flows and they could roll it with, they could roll the swap and manage the exposure with any of the other banks that they deal with on a daily basis. So providing a, um, uh, an alert that tells them in an expiring swap, typically that comes from one part of a, a bank's um, uh, infrastructure notifications. Uh, the FX execution capability typically comes from another and getting those two pieces to talk is, is difficult. Um, but doing something like using FTC3 as a glue is a great place to start. So, so that's one example of a workflow, but we tend to go in and work with firms um, in a pretty lightweight fashion. It, it doesn't take long to identify a workflow that makes sense to start that would really benefit from um, what FTC3 brings to the table uh, and then, then get started and, and get going. Cool, um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I think that was pretty comprehensive. Um, so, uh, Thanks, Matt. Uh, we are going to uh, continue to move on to uh, to Chris West. Um, and Chris West is the Director of Solutions Engineering at Cosaic, and he's gonna talk about changes to version 1.2 uh, to the new release, but also talk about uh, goals and looking ahead to version 2.0. Um, with that, Chris, I will go on mute and have at it. Hi there, everyone. So changing gears a little bit, I'm here to give you a quick overview of the most important changes in FDC3 1.2, um, which as a release was largely focused on maturing the standard based on the experiences of working group members that are actually implementing and using it right now. So the main functional addition to the API is raise intent for context. Um, lots of systems such as your desktop OS or phone uh, show you share dialogues with options for what you can do with a particular file or piece of content. Uh, FDC3's raise intent does the same thing. You pass it an intent and a context, so an item and what you want to do with it, and your desktop agent can show you a resolver allowing the user to decide what app they want to resolve that intent. However, the feedback we and others have had is that sometimes the user wants to discover what they can do with a piece of context, i.e. what's possible. Now, the same concept is creeping into mobile share dialogues, um, which were one of the original inspirations for FDC3's intent, where content can now often be shared with other processes, not just applications uh, like WhatsApp or Facebook, um, but processes for doing things like bookmarking and saving for later. Now, 
raising ten for context is FDC3's answer to this. You can ask a desktop agent what's possible with a piece of context, receive a list of intents, uh, so actions that are possible, and then what apps can solve those once you picked one. So that means that you can now not only integrate with apps you didn't know about when you implemented your code, um, as you could with raise intent, but you can also perform even completely new action types that hadn't been contemplated when your code was originally read. The rest of the changes in 1.2 improve developer support and generally make FDC3 easier to work with. For example, another enhancement from the working group's experience implementing FDC3 and consuming it in various applications is the FDC3 ready event. In the past, you had to poll for the window.fdc3 object. In some implementations, it's not ready straight away. So to even know that you're doing FDC3, you have to keep checking it. So now we've introduced a, a standardized ready event, which with a very simple pattern you can use to pick up FDC3 when it's ready. We've also looked at open and raise intent, which can now target applications based on app metadata, where previously they only supported the app name. This was a mismatch with the app D API, where multiple versions of an app could have the same name, but different app IDs and version numbers. Hence, you can now use either the name or an app metadata object, which has been updated to include both the name and version or the app ID. We've also introduced a new get info call, which will allow you to check what version of the FDC3 standard that the desktop agent is providing to you. This will become more important as the standard evolves and goes through more versions, particularly with FDC3's first major update on the horizon, where there will be some deprecations and some breaking changes to deal with. So, Continuing the theme of making FDC3 easier to work with, uh, some of the working group participants have produced an NPM package, which provides an interface to any standard desktop agent, should make it easier to bring into your code, gives you TypeScript types for all the FDC3 API operations and the context types, enums for the existing standardized intents and context names, and it even exports the FDC3 APIs, which will be implemented by the desktop agent you're using, uh, like uh, Finsomble or Glue42, but allows them to be exported as ES6 functions you can import into your code and use at, as you might want to. Um, it also includes a number of util functions for comparing FDC3 version numbers to make that easy to work with too. It's been published for both versions 1.1 and 1.2 of the standard, so you can start using it right away, even if your desktop agent doesn't yet support 1.2. There's also a number of bug fixes and other changes, uh, deprecations for things that are going to change in 2.0. For full details on all of that, go and see the uh, 1.2 release notes, which you'll find on the GitHub repository under releases. And then looking ahead to FDC 3.2, well, we've planned a number of features already in the working groups. They include improving the app D specification, giving it host independent manifests, improving its metadata and other functions. We're looking to refine channels, both those you join through the desktop agent and the channels API. Uh, so clearing up some confusion about what the different channels are intended for, helping you do things like resetting context on a channel or join multiple channels and removing the global channel, which was there for backwards compatibility with the first version of FDC3 1.0. We're also looking to expand the desktop agent API. There's gonna be support for two-way data flow with intents. Uh, you'll be able to raise intents without context. You'll be able to potentially work with or target multiple instances of the same application. Now, we're currently aiming to have the 2.0 update agreed through the standard working group uh, by November, which is a quite an aggressive timeline compared to what we've done before. It's been about a year between releases. This represents trying to shorten that cycle to six or seven months. We're also spinning off several subgroups to work on particular proposals for parts of the scope. Um, so please get in touch if you're interested in any of the topics we've mentioned already. Uh, but note the scope is still open to discussion as well. So if you've got big ideas or things that you know need to be standardized uh, for your own use cases, then bring them on to the standards working group meetings and we'll get them on the agenda to discuss. The next meeting is Thursday the 27th of May at 10 a.m. EDT or 3 p.m. British summertime. We're also going to be starting an initiative uh, we're calling Community Contributed Context Types. The goal of which is to make it straightforward for the community uh, 
who are using and implementing FTC3 to publicize the fact that they're using it, what intents and context types they use and how they use them. Right now, there's a GitHub issue open that you can uh, comment on, declare your interest or the fact that you're uh, working with FTC3. Uh, but in future, we're hoping to build a dedicated area, a dedicated microsite within the FTC3 website in order to make it easier to submit and publicize these things. Ultimately, the goal is to gather information on what people are doing, help others to reuse their approach uh, so that they can interrupt more easily, and also to gather information for the things that we need to standardize um, within the stand, put into the standard itself. So there are lots of types uh, that people will still need to create, and we'd like to bring those in over time through the community contributed type context types initiative. And that's the update. Good job. <laughs> um, thank you, Chris. Uh, and I believe that uh, James McLeod, who's director of community, has been putting links um, about the release notes and uh, community usage um, and everything that Chris was talking about into the chat. So please look there. Uh, by the way, if you do have questions uh, for the panelists, we do have a Q&A module for Zoom. Uh, so please go ahead and click that and send them. We will hold questions to the end. Um, and now uh, we're going to move on to Leslie Spiro, uh, CEO of Glue42. And he's going to lead us through a demo of FTC3 on Glue42. So Leslie, uh, the floor is yours. We have come off mute. Um, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to pick up before I start on um, the piece showing how FTC3, we think it can be used and how it fits into a modern desktop integration platform. I just want to pick up on a few points from Matt's um, excellent introduction. Um, first of all, uh, Glue42 is a long-term provider of desktop integration platforms. Um, and I will stop myself pitching about how great our platform is, but it's really very good. Um, we're very interested in open source. We've been very involved in um, Open Mama, which was um, something put out by Wombat and then New York Stock Exchange and part of the Linux Foundation to do with market data. We've been involved with that for a long time. Been very early uh, involved with FTC3, and we also have um, a version of Glue42 available as open source. So we're very comfortable with working in this kind of environment with people who are competitors but on the other hand they're interested in the same things we are so they're great people to talk to as well so uh, we certainly are very grateful to Finos for providing this kind of environment in which potential clients potential competitors can work together in areas that make sense so uh, I would thoroughly kind of um, support that um, Matt spoke about experimentation as being one of the benefits of open source and towards the end we're going to be talking about a new open source module that we're going to provide that will allow you to run um, the FTC3 1.2 API in a standard browser, Chrome or Edge certainly, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But this idea that you can just experiment and, and without having to install anything or other than a browser extension, I think is a key point about um, open source APIs. Um, <clears throat> but um, Matt's primary thing was about cooperation and um, I was going to start my presentation if I'd been able to get my act together with um, somebody singing war. Now, whether it would have been Edwin Starr or Bruce Springsteen, this idea that FTC3 is actually, there's war going on <laughs> and between uh, us container vendors and um, in-house applications. And so I think FTC3 is a very interesting part to play in that. So um, I hope you can all see my screen. Um, this is what a modern desktop integration platform looks like. We have a WPF application using the Glue42 API. We have a JavaScript version. They're using channels, which is a concept in FTC3. And um, you can make changes. And then you bring in other applications. And um, you know, here we see uh, a, a dummy news application we wrote. And then we see Reuters uh, or Refinitiv uh, News all synchronizing here. And um, this is gonna build and show what a modern, some bits of a modern application. So uh, desktop integration platform might look like. So Matt said it lets, that the point of interop is it lets different teams work together, release separately and all that kind of stuff, which is all completely true. 
but doesn't require FTC3. I mean, both uh, Finsomble from Kosaic and uh, Glue42 from us and OpenFin all let you do that. So the question that I want to address first is why do we need FTC3? And I think that um, another piece from Adaptive is a good example. They have a, an open source project called Reactive Trader, which is a nice trading application. And um, we use it in some of our demos, some nice looking screens there. And if you look at the code for, um, if you look at the code for um, that product, it has little bits of lines that go, if I'm running in Glue42, do this. If I'm running in OpenFin, do that. And so this idea that they need to be aware of uh, and, and put the effort into supporting these different platforms is a kind of problem that any application vendor is going to face if they want to make use of the benefits of a desktop integration platform, which Matt outlined, you know, separate releases, separate uh, upgrades um, and that kind of stuff. So we very much see FTC3, and this is where the next bit of the demo is going to go to, as a way for an application vendor not to have to choose which container their clients might be running, but to actually be able to work with all of them in the certainly in the context of application directories, um, synchronizing on channels and intents. So, you know, if we carry on here, Excel can participate in Glue 42, isn't that a great feature? Um, probably not if you're a developer, you want to get rid of Excel, but traders want to keep it. And here we're showing um, as we select something in an Excel sheet, it uh, everything else updates um, because Excel is a fully participating member in um, these applications in this environment. But what we're also going to show is that um, as we get to um, selecting intents. So as Chris uh, showed, these are a feature, a strong and important feature of um, FTC3 in which uh, having selected a context, an instrument or a contact or a trade or whatever, um, you can do various actions. And the actions that are available depend on what's installed on that user's machine at that time. And so here we're gonna see a list of intents which include a um, an FTC3 chart that was produced by Nick Kolber. Nick Kolber used to be uh, used to run the FTC3 thing, and he produced a set of uh, demo applications. And what we're going to show here is um, selecting that chart um, from that FTC3 chart. Now we're going to show selecting a Glue42 application first, and then we're going to show selecting the um, FTC3 chart. And so for us, the thing about FTC3 is that it lets <clears throat> any vendor, um, so this is a, an application Nick wrote at the end of last year, had no idea about Glue42. I think he was working for OpenFin at the time. And um, we just made it available. We, we declared it in the FTC3 channel and um, it's now available to this Glue42 application. And so that to us is the really, one of the really important points about FTC3 is it avoids the need for a war. And don't forget the war we're talking about is a piece of little war. It's not like the war between Refinitiv and Bloomberg or Factset, who we'll talk about in a minute. You know, this is about individual applications that are uh, individual um, banks and uh, buy and sell side organizations that have purchased containers. As a, as a vendor, an application vendor, I can interact with all of those things without having to make a choice. And that to us is the primary point of um, FTC3. And um, we'll talk a bit more about that later. But here we see these applications uh, coming on and we, we put the FTC3 application, which was written again with no evidence of, no knowledge of Blue42 and it can set uh, the applicate, it can set the context for both Glue42 applications and also the Refinitiv um, Workspaces application, which again has no knowledge at this stage of FTC3. Uh, Glue42 acts as a way of sticking together all these different applications. Um, and that's the main, Thing I wanted to leave you with around why FTC3 is we think is most important. It provides a way for application vendors to um, provide interop, get the benefits that they talk about, uh, that, that Matt was talking about, without having to choose a platform. Um, and the same thing would apply for those banks um, that have their own in-house um, integration platforms as well. Uh, and you know, here we're going to show bringing up a workspace from um, uh, from a, uh, an Outlook message 
And the point is that this workspace, we've configured it, all these applications are either FTC3 demo applications or third parties like FactSet or Salesforce that have got no, there's no Glue 42 specific stuff in there. FactSet are a company that are strongly committed to using um, FTC3 as a way of allowing their applications to interact without um, having to commit to a platform. So that's probably the primary thing that I wanted to leave you with about um, where FTC3 is most useful. I mean, it's a nice enough API, but we've all got nice enough APIs. The nice thing about FactSet, the nice, nice thing about FTC3 is it runs everywhere. I mean, clearly it's not like FactSet wanted to integrate their workspace with uh, Refinitiv, but if that's what a user wants to do, they can do that using this kind of approach. Um, so that's something about what where we see FTC3 being relevant. Um, the other piece we wanted to talk about was um, Glue 42 Core. So FTC3, we showed you this desktop working with Excel and all these other applications that requires an installation on the desktop. And um, it does lots of great stuff, but maybe that's not what you want. And so we also have an open source version of Glue 42, which runs within the browser. And um, this can provide an excellent way to get started. So here we, we're showing it through um, a Chrome extension, which will run in Edge as well, um, which shows a list of applications to launch and selecting channels and that kind of stuff. You could write a nice UI, but this is we, we, we think this is a lot of use for developers who want to play with FTC3 without having to buy anything, without having to sign a POC, without even having to contact a salesman, much as salesmen are wonderful people, they can be a bit pushy. And uh, this is a way to just start using it without having to in engage with anybody. So here we're going to show um, launching the same kind of application, the client list application, and um, again, all within a browser. And um, next we're going to open the um, client list demo um, as a PWA application. So I'm not going to spend much time on it. We have run some webinars. PWAs for the desktop are incredibly important. By this time next year, I think we'll probably stop talking about Electron and everything will be about the way to get Chromium on your desktop is actually in a browser. And this is one way, this is on the path to do that. So here, what we see is the client list application. It's not running in an Electron container. It's not running, it's running just in the browser as a desktop window. And so I think looking at desktop PWA is, I would recommend to anybody who's interested in delivering uh, browser applications to the front end. And it's using Glue 42 and it's using FTC3. And so here we see the client list and we're just gonna kind of run on and show um, a bit more here. Here we open the portfolio. This is gonna use the FTC3 open. So there's use of common app directory and it's open in the browser because it's not set up as a PWA here just to show how that works. And um, we can, Put them on the same channel and they share context um, and um, this is uh, where, where we're really going with that. Um, it's also worth pointing out something that Chris said which is that this all relies on the fact that um, we have a common way of describing applications in this case instruments. So what we have here is a chart that's just popped out that was from Nick Kolber's demo applications and it knew nothing about Glue 42. And what's really important from an FTC3 point of view um, is that these applications are, some of them are using the Glue 42 API, some of them are using the FTC3 API, doesn't matter. What really matters is that they have the same data type, that they're describing an instrument in the same way. And that's why the, um, initiative that Chris mentioned for community data types, which encourages people who are writing FTC3 compatible applications to describe how they're describing an instrument, how they're gonna describe a trade, how they're gonna describe um, a fill, all that kind of stuff is absolutely key because the more all of the applications can use the same definition of an instrument, I mean, it may, an instrument does allow in the FTC3 things different symbologies, but at least we know a RIC is called RIC, not. Reuters or Refinitiv instrument code or whatever, and the Bloomberg terminal symbol is, is known as Bloomberg and BPOD is a different name. As long as we can say there are lots of symbols, but this is how we refer to them, 
we can start to have data types that can be used by lots of different applications, lots of different containers, lots of different clients. And so in, some, in many respects, from our point of view, within our Blue 42 uh, development, we're more interested in the community data types, which we're starting to use in our connectors and other things than in the individual APIs, which we fully support, but we have alternatives for that. So here, we're just going to expand this out and show how we can have different applications all connecting through and um, we're going to open fact set and, and bring that through as well. Um, and so um, we would recommend that people look at FTC3, particularly people who uh, uh, have applications that may run in different clients. And even if you're whatever API you might use for your interop, look at the community, participate in building a library of data types within FTC3 because you're going to benefit if this trade analysis application knows how to use describe a trade in the same way. And here we have FactSet running in uh, Clue 42 Core as it was running in um, Clue 42 Desktop and as it's been running in uh, uh, Finsomble, I've seen it running there and that kind of stuff. So, um, and we also support workspaces, but, but I won't go into that. So that's really what I wanted to say. Two key takeaways, or three takeaways. Two key, the first two key, FTC3, really important for, uh, application vendors who want to run in multiple containers, whatever API you're using, the data types are really important. Please, please join us in the FTC3 working groups to create them. And the final one is if you want to play with the FTC3 API, a good way would be um, through the Glue42 core pure open source um, MIT license with the um, uh, browser extension. Um, and that's pretty much all, that's what I wanted to say. So thank you. Awesome, thank you, Leslie, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm very inspired by the fact that you guys are all right on time today, so thanks. Um, uh, we... Not my first rodeo is, I believe, <laughs> the uh, phrase. All right, I'm gonna take away um, your sharing ability for a second and- uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no, all good. Can you thanks. see my slides or? <laughs> nope. Okay, cool. Um, so next we're gonna to move to uh, Sean Harvey. Sean is the FinSymbol technical product owner uh, at Cosaic, um, and he's gonna demo the FTC3 1.2 in action uh, with FinSymbol 6.0. Uh, Sean, if you are ready to go, I will stop sharing. As as I, I am, I am, I'll, I'll share here in a minute. So just to, uh, just to echo um, a lot of the comments that Leslie and Matt made too, I think, um, it's, it's analogous for me in, in my career um, as a web developer 15 years ago, you know, there were those instances where uh, to try to implement a particular API to enable a particular user experience, there would be these times where I would have to compare uh, the differences between browsers to see if, if this one particular API was supported here versus there. Uh, does it support in the same way? Do I need to do a polyfill? And I think what FTC3 uh, opens up uh, within the desktop interop space is that application developers uh, really no longer need to, to worry about that. And there's this bright future um, where just to simply implement a, an exchange of data from one application to another, uh, no matter what the container um, that's being provided is, uh, the application developer just simply needs to implement uh, a standard set of APIs. And we no longer have to, you know, in, in the developer term, uh, I think it's called bike shedding. We no longer have to talk day in and day out about, well, how do you do this? And how do you do this about what about that? We now have a guideline uh, in the FTC3 standard uh, to, to help us along the way uh, as we implement uh, not only desktop agents, but, but the applications that, would, that exist within there. So I think it's super exciting. Uh, I want to give a uh, special thanks to Finos uh, and also the, the PMC working group and the, the working group in general for just the hard work that they've put in over, um, you know, really the past 12 months to get 1.2 out. Uh, I think it's an incredible uh, advancement forward. I think it's uh, a great collaboration, um, you know, a, a diverse collaboration between uh, competitors uh, and vendors and uh, product managers all within the space. So uh, if you are curious, uh, if you have use cases that FTC3 
that you think FTC3 should support, I would definitely encourage you to, to join us for the next meeting um, and, and get involved. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's critical. Um, so this morning, uh, I wanted to uh, kind of give some demonstrations of uh, FTC3 1.2. Uh, I, I work uh, at Cosaic on the Fensemble product team, uh, and we are uh, in the midst of getting ready to release our newest version, which is Fensemble 6. Uh, it does support the FTC3 1.2 standard uh, out of the box with our new interop service. And I think um, it's, it's important to note that from a business standpoint, from a, uh, from a product standpoint, FTC3 uh, is uh, a huge point of emphasis uh, for, for Fensemble, as I know it is for Glue42. Uh, we really do see uh, the opportunities, uh, not only to lower the barrier of entry for uh, application developers, but just the opportunities uh, to explore what else can be built uh, Upon, upon the FTC3 standard. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to kill my video just to speed things up. Okay, so what I first wanna do is, is actually just demonstrate some core FTC3 functionality uh, to, to be able to highlight the differences uh, in 1.2. Uh, so here uh, on the left hand side of my screen, I just have a really basic blotter. Uh, it has some information about uh, as a list of instruments, some pricing information. I can can dig down and do uh, whatever analysis that I need to do. Uh, but the key advantage of having uh, an interop capability, uh, especially one that's supported by a standard, is that uh, I can enable my end user to find uh, and do more uh, with just a little bit of data. So this button here, view chart, implements the, the raise intent API. Uh, I can click it and uh, see my UI resolver here and I can say, oh, okay, well, for this particular instrument, I can resolve it and view a chart. Cool. So that's gonna open up and I can move that over and zoom is a little slow today. And I can move that over and I clicked on MMM uh, 3M and it opened up the chart. Great, uh, pretty core functionality. I can link these two uh, together and I can look up Tesla as this application broadcast context from here to there. Really core functionality. Um, so let me hop over to a new workspace, and we'll talk about the differences coming out in 1.2. So that simple interaction uh, that I just did where passing context uh, from one application to another, raising an intent from one application to another, uh, was, was really implemented uh, with four basic APIs, uh, broadcast, raise intent, add intent listener, and add context listener. And you can do a lot with just those four basic FTC3 APIs. And I, if, if anyone is looking for a place to start, uh, I would say just start with those, with those four basic ones and uh, see what, what workflows, what experiences you can build. Um, so I wanna talk through some of the changes coming in 1.2 uh, that'll be available in Fensemble 6. So uh, as Chris mentioned uh, in his presentation, um, the, the, the differences are uh, there are two new APIs. So raise intent for context, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, and then there is a utilitarian API called get info. And let me just open up a console real quick. And just to show that You know, when you think about developing an application, especially within a standard, uh, you're going to want to probably do some type of check to say, okay, what container am I running in? What version of FTC3 am I running in or is available to me? So here we can call the get info API. And it's really simple. The desktop agent just simply returns an object uh, with the version of the one uh, version of the FTC3 standard. Here we see 1.2, the version of uh, the provider, and then the provider itself. So now your applications can be made kind of self-aware to say, okay, uh, perhaps I'm implementing 
uh, functionality within the 1.1 standard or the 1.2 standard or the 2.0 standard. Uh, I want to do a check uh, in the container to see what's available to me so that way I can uh, do some type of progressive enhancement maybe for my user. So again, this is just a really simple utilitarian addition. Uh, the big addition in the 1.2 standard is this uh, new API called Raise Intent for Context. And again, uh, here I have uh, my basic blotter. I have a couple news applications and a chart. Um, and I wanna give my end user uh, the ability to decide uh, what they want to do with a particular piece of data. And then to Chris's point, uh, you know, we wanna open up the, the opportunity for the user to explore what else they can do with this data. Um, so let me again kind of inspect what I can do with uh, an instrument. So we're gonna see what I can do with Tesla. Uh, I can view a chart, I can view chart study, I can view news. Uh, let me come to here and I'll just simply, and I might have clicked the demo gods will be with me. So here we go. Uh, we clicked on Tesla and I just simply chose uh, a currently existing instance of the chart application. As you can see, it updated uh, just to do that one more time. We update to, to Dow. I can do the same thing if I want to read some news on Disney and Reuters. And here we see Reuters open up to news about Disney. Uh, so again, what we're providing here is uh, not necessarily a prescriptive resolution uh, for a particular data type, but we're really leaving it up to the user to say, oh, well, what can I do with this data? Uh, and providing them with the, with the options. One thing that we've seen uh, within, within the, the desktop interop space is that uh, users can oftentimes have 70, 80 plus applications available to them. Uh, and when we think about uh, how a user designs their workflow for what's most efficient to them, a prescriptive solution uh, like you, what you may get from Raise Intent is not always the best solution. So Raise Intent for context uh, gives a little bit more flexibility there uh, for a user to decide, hey, I have an FTC3 instrument, um, what are all the applications that are available to me uh, to take that data and enhance it a little bit further? Uh, perhaps that's a news application, perhaps it's a CMS, uh, perhaps it's just simply uh, a chart or other uh, analytic tools. And again, this, uh, this builds upon you know, the existing uh, core functionality of 1.2. So we can still broadcast and uh, applications will update uh, based upon that, that broadcasted data. So, so that's it. Those are the differences uh, in 1.2. Again, the additions are uh, the raise intent for context, get info. Uh, Chris mentioned uh, that there uh, were certainly some, some refinements that happened in the API. Uh, there are additional ways to target applications with app metadata. Uh, those are things that I'm not gonna be covering in the demo today. Um, and then the, I think the last thing that I wanted to show off, I might be risking it here, but um, if you are by chance uh, a developer of native applications, um, we see this a lot where, uh, especially within digital transformation, uh, customers need the ability to uh, run, a, say, a legacy Java or a legacy .NET application alongside uh, newer HTML5 applications. Uh, FTC3 can work for both. Um, and so here, let me, I have a, a basic Java application here. Uh, one of our developers uh, was, was developing this on their own to help them um, with the FTC3 implementation. And, and uh, I think it just really articulates the possibilities here. So here we have a basic Java application and I'm going to raise an intent for view chart. and the demo gods aren't with me today. So anyway, what the expectation here would be is uh, I would click a raise intent button and I would get the same UI resolver that you saw previously. 
and I would have these same options available to me in terms of being able to uh, resolve that intent uh, to a charting application, to a news application, uh, and then be able to share that context back and forth. So um, just wanted to show that off really quickly. Uh, but again, those are the differences in 1.2. Uh, if you did want to if you did want to play with that, uh, Finsomal 6.0 is shipping towards the end of the month. Uh, there is a public version uh, in Cosaic's uh, GitHub repo. Uh, you can pull it down there and uh, be able to play with some of these different APIs. Uh, there's also the browser extension, which is available. So. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much to the FTC3 working group. Again, I think 1.2 is a great advancement forward uh, and definitely looking forward to 2.0. Awesome, great job, Sean. And, uh, and thank you all of our uh, speakers today. Um, and we're going to open up the floor to questions in just a second. We have had some questions come through, so I'll ask those in a second. Um, and if you haven't already done so, please, uh, please engage with us on the Q&A module or through chat, uh, which we've seen. But uh, we try to make our meetups and webinars as close to an in-person meetup as possible um, whenever we can. So uh, I just wanted to let you know that we are giving away t-shirts. Um, and uh, the two t-shirts that we're giving away um, is to Yvonne of State Street and Trevor of ChangeCat. Um, Alexandra from Finos will get in touch with uh, both of you to send you those t-shirts. Um, thank you and of course everybody else for hanging out with us today and of course we're hoping that we can do this in person soon. Um, so questions. Um, one of the first ones that I wanted to ask is, is about real world use of FDC3 um, and is it, is it being used actively out in the real world? If anybody would like to take that, uh, go right ahead. I'll take it. Um, we have a large client, publicly acknowledged JPM Wealth Management, and um, they recently started taking fact set and um, were quite pleasantly surprised that they could stop URL rewriting and just use some built in FTC3 functionality uh, to interact with Glue42. So we weren't expecting that use case, We, uh, but just popped up. And because fact set had committed to FTC3, they could have a better integration with the uh, platform that's running at JP Morgan Wealth Management. So that's one example. We've had many of the same experiences at Cosaic. We've got uh, several big bank clients who have chosen FDC3 to implement all their internal stuff with. Um, so before they've even comp contemplated integrating with other people's applications, it, as Matt said, uh, forestalled certain debates. They, uh, they gave them a design to work to they were able to implement a lot of stuff very, very quickly without having to come up with API designs. And it's left them in a great position to bring in lots of other applications, which they're now doing into their desktops. So it's sped them up in multiple different ways. It's been a very effective way to get started. Awesome, thank you both. Um, and and I, oh, I would echo both. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, not in a position to, to speak on behalf of, of clients, but... Um, yeah, we've implemented FTC3 related workflows and infrastructure at um, a number of very large and small firms across across capital markets. So definitely something being used in production um, today, many places. Awesome. Um, by the way, can you see, please help make FTC3 even better on the screen right now? Or am I showing you my... <laughs> we, 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 we can, and I think we're all trying, Chris. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's the job, right? <laughs> Great job. Um, I think I'm going to this, this is this is a glue 42 mug we give to every developer who joins us and it says why you know do better <laughs> so maybe then we can ask take that as a, a thought we can all do better right um, I'm going to ask one more question I believe and then uh, there's a little bit here about uh, how how you can make FTC3 even better um, but this goes back to uh, Leslie uh, Leslie uh, you spoke about the FTC3 API is being ideal for ISVs uh, with applications that may run in multiple firms. Uh, do you think it makes sense, or do you think it makes, do you think it makes it to use FTC3 APIs for internal developments? Um, does that make sense? 
absolutely it does it, it for one of the reasons which has already been mentioned it forestalls the, the discussion and the debate uh amongst a group of very reasonable people and just lets you make progress on on adding business value uh but uh that's one reason but two it sets you up in a very good place to integrate with external vendors should you suddenly find yourself uh, in a very good place with with internal success which is a really added benefit um you're going to get there faster anyway why not use a use the standard to allow you to interoperate more more widely um it's like would would i think uh, i would ftc3 is definitely not there yet but would would anyone seriously consider um would anyone seriously suggest not using http http to write web servers internally um surely not right just because they're only going to be viewed internally doesn't mean you wouldn't use something that makes sense there. It's more about whether or not you'd use the Finsomble API or the Glue 42 API directly, or whether there's a benefit from using the FTC 3 one. Uh, but I'm, I'm not disagreeing. It's just that that's the option. It's not about doing something completely internal and new, but uh, your mileage may vary as they say. Cool. Um, I, Thank you again, panelists. Uh, uh, if you can see the slide, uh, how you can help. Um, uh, this is something that the, the FTC3 leads have uh, put out and we will of course put out slides later on um, that has this information, but uh, we would like to know how your organization is using FTC3. That question was asked too, of course, but um, but tell us about the benefits that you're seeing and, and uh, having direct use cases um, that, that the team can look at and figure out you know, then what goes into the next versions um, and how to make this better for everybody involved. Of course, demos to um, contribute to the community context types initiative. Um, put that link in there. Um, and of course, like I said, call for use cases. Um, uh, please put it into the GitHub repo. Uh, we will have that in the chat, but we'll send that out. Um, we'll send out basically show notes um, for, for this whenever we send out the video. Um, uh, that will be compiled of all this. Um, also wanted to note that uh, tomorrow we're having a discussion, uh, tomorrow Thursday, we're having a discussion about how FTC3 can be used to improve interoperability in RegTech. Uh, the meeting is at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5.30 p.m. Uh, BST. And uh, we'll put uh, in the chat more details on how to get involved and we will also send that out um hold on let me do that real quick um because i don't want to miss it um and so with that we're gonna uh, start to close uh, we hope you enjoyed this edition of the open source and finance webinar on ftc3 uh, thank you again for to our great speakers uh, from our member companies adaptive financial consulting cosaic and glue 42 and we want to sincerely thank you for spending your time with us. Uh, we invite you to connect with our community, not only the FTC3 community, but also the greater FinOS community. Join us at FinOS.org to find out more about our community. Follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, join our Slack channels and please subscribe to the Open Source and FinOS podcast and give us five stars. I would appreciate that. It would make my life a lot easier. Just kidding. Um, and join our mailing list for uh, weekly and biweekly updates. Um, but just get involved with the community. It's a great community and it's growing. I, I think everybody here can say that uh, where this community was three years ago versus now is, is, um, is you know, it's trending in the right direction for sure. Um, so this has been your host, Grizz Griswold of Finos. Good day, good night, wherever you are. Mm -hmm.